get ready for a ride. Tonight, I'm taking you guys on a journey about jobs and Jesus. All right, is that clever? <laughs> what is integrity in the workplace? I will be presenting. My name is David Pat. I am a graduate of Bethel Seminary, um, and I'm a mobilizer for OMF International. For those who don't know, OMF International is a missions agency. Um, what I do in mobilization is I do mentorship and leadership development of young missionaries. Okay. <clears throat> Jobs and Jesus. What is integrity in the workplace? You know, when I researched this, there is surprisingly little about professional integrity. All right, if you don't believe, go home and Google this. All right, Google professional integrity. There's very, very little. Um, and when we think about America nowadays, one of the biggest things we talked about in the last couple of years was ethics and workload, right? When you think about ethics, bad ethics, some of you guys think about the mortgage loans, Bernie Madoff, bankers, all right, lawyers. Some of you, someone when I say bankers and lawyers, you kind of like visceral reaction. Um, but it's not just those hated kind of professions. Each one of us who has a profession, we have responsibility to have integrity in the workplace. And I want to explain what that means. We talk about it all the time, but what does that actually look like? So let's start in scripture. We are in Matthew 5, this is from the NIV. Matthew 5 says, You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and give, it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Pop quiz, who wrote the book of Matthew? Matthew. <laughs> 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 you know, there was one time I, I was speaking um, for the youth, and the parents were there too, and I asked the kids, what profession was Jonah? And someone was like, apostle. I was like, that's not even right in the ninth century. <laughs> so you guys know, Matthew, um, during, writing during the times of Jesus, <clears throat> it's a quotation because it's from God. All, right, all things act in the Bible from God. That's quotations. You would lie to the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Let's start with that. If you build your city on a hill, right, you're asking for attention, right? And there's got good reasons to do that because it's, it's more defensible and things like that, right? But you can't hide yourself if you are sitting on a hill. Because obviously, anytime you walk by the road, you're like, oh, there's a city right there. So in the same way, no do people light a lamp. Okay, so imagine all, all circumstances where you would light a lamp and put it under a basket because then you would not be able to see the light. But you put it on a stand and gives light to all in the house. So <clears throat> to under, understand what the Bible teaches, you have, to start, you have to imagine this in your head first, right? To treat everything in the Bible the way it's meant to be treated. So this is not some like, you know, <clears throat> these are like, the, these, this is like, therefore you go do this. He's trying to draw an illustration. So to understand this passage, you have to understand the illustration. So think of a light, think of a city on a hill. Once you have that in your head, in the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Let me show you a lamp. That's a lamp in the first century. The way that works is, um, you can see this little pot right here, right? That's where you put the oil. And then you have a little wick and then you burn the wick, right? It's kind of like a, it's kind of like a, the way a candle works, right? It burns down and then the oil is the fuel. Look how much light that thing's producing. It's obviously not 100 lumens, you know, stuff that we do, we have today. <clears throat> if you just see this picture, how much is it? It's actually lighting. <coughs> this, this is the illustration I'll give you guys. Jesus is the sun, he's the light. I am the light of the world. So during daytime, right, you have all the light you need. You guys know that, at least in San Diego. Okay, because we have sun here. <laughs> when the sun is out, it is crazy bright. All right? <clears throat> when the sun is gone, it's dark. And so we have lights. Lights mimic what the sun is trying to do. All right? And there's also more powerful lights, there's weaker lights. No light on Earth is ever going to be as powerful as the sun. The scientists in the room can confirm that, right? <laughs> no light on Earth is as powerful as the sun. All I can do is try to mimic and be like what the sun does. All right? In the same way, that's what the Christian life is. You yourself can never light the world like Jesus can light the world. All we can do is imitate Jesus. All right? That's what we're trying to do in the workplace. We're trying to imitate Jesus. If Jesus was in a workplace, what would he do? 
Understand that we are not Jesus, but it's the closest they're going to get. <clears throat> That's what it means to be a light in the workplace, right? We're trying to shine this light in a dark place. So every single workplace that you guys are in here in, in San Diego, in America, right? Without Christians, without the gospel, is darkness. Anytime there's a Christian in that workplace, it's God saying, I am putting a light in that workplace. If there's a lot of Christians, there's a lot of light. It's like 100 lumens. All right, if there's one Christian, it's just like a little tiny lamp right here. But we're just like, there goes dark, right there. <laughs> with that in mind, right, that's what we're thinking about today. Has how, how are we lights in the workplace? So let me start with this. Good works glorify God. Because all of life is about reflecting the glory of God. The reason why you guys should be a light in the workplace is because you should be a light anywhere you go. And you, you have to spend most hours of a week in the workplace. We are telling not to serve ourselves in the lifestyles we want, but to demonstrate the gospel. All right? Um, I will tell you right now, there are a lot of jobs people take just so they can support the lifestyle. All right? There are a lot of jobs that people don't like doing. They just do it because it's a secure job and it makes a lot of money. We don't do that. All right, Christians, at the end of the day, we use a talent not to serve ourselves and our lifestyles because we need a big house, we need a better car, we need to take vacations like that, but demonstrate the gospel. The gospel is proclaimed in how people see us in the workplace. I'm going to break all these down in a second. I'm going to let you know where I'm going. And how we spend our money and our free time is noticed by our coworkers. Our lifestyle is noticed. And th this is one of the main points I'm going to make to you guys today. Who you are, your character, Right? That's going to be seen the most every week in your workplace. Because right? you're, you're, when you're at home, you don't want to see your character. Right? Because you're at home, chilling by yourself on a computer. Unless you go on an internet blog and comment, then people see your character <laughs> and all the trollish things you say. <laughs> all right? But for the majority of us, your character is seen the most in your workplace. All right? So, here's you guys a story. Um, I used to work at LA Fitness on um, Mirror Mesa. You guys ever been to LA Fitness on Mirror Mesa? Who, who's been there? Okay. So I used to work at LA Fitness in Mirror Mesa. Um, it was, when, I, when I left the Marines, I needed a job my senior year. So I was like, I, I like the gym. I'll do, I'll do this. And so I really felt like it was, it was God wanted me there. Right? The reason I knew is because I called them up. I'm like, hey, you guys have job openings like for trainers? And they're like, are you certified? I'm like, no, but I know how to train. He's like, oh, I want you to come in anyways. So I, I came in, and then I was like, yeah, so I left the Marines, and like, I like working out, da da da. And he's like, you want to do sales? I'm like, I can do sales. <laughs> right? I can sell training. He's like, all right, uh, you, start, you start next week. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, like, no resume submission, nothing. It's like, you just start next week. I'm like, all right. And so <clears throat> I really felt that God kind of just put that in my lap. Right, but me, me and the manager got along really well. He obviously knew I was into fitness. Um, and so, this started one of my most formative years of my, my professional life. It was formative, for one, because I learned a lot about the workplace. I learned a lot about sales. I learned a lot about you know, the corporate environment. I'd never want to work for a corporation. All right, even though it's a private corporation, I'd never want to work for it again. But there were, there were two relationships that I had there that um, really taught me a lot. All right? You guys want to hear the good story or the best story first? That's the best story, story first. Okay. Um, when I, you gotta admit, first of all, I got to start with this. I was, what? End of college, how old you? 21, the end of college? Right? Um, I was young, young for my grade. So at 21 years old, so imagine yourself at 21, right? You're like, not the most sensitive patient kind of person. Okay. There was, um, there were some people who were interested in bodybuilding and stuff. You know, and so I, I always talked about my diet all the time. I always talked about, you know, like, oh, this is what I do to get like, lean out, to get super ripped. But there was one trainer there. She was actually a powerlifter, right? So she wasn't out of shape. She was just really big. Like, she could bench 215. Okay, so I don't know how many guys in here could bench 215, right? She could rock. <laughs> There's one guy in here who can bench 215. Question. <laughs> Gerald can bench 215. We're going to find out later. That's true. <laughs> So she, she, was, she was like this, this big girl, um, and then she, but she was sensitive about her weight, okay? And so I was like, well, that's, you know, okay. So I, around you, I won't say anything bad about you, right? But then I would, I remember I would talk about diet and stuff all the time around her. So this is what I learned. 
All right, when someone's sensitive about their weight, when they're in earshot, you need to be careful about what you say. Okay, and so I remember one time one of my co was asking me like, hey, all these lunches here, like who has a healthy lunch? I'm like, oh, none of the lunches here are really healthy. We're kind of just like, you know, people think that's healthy, but that's not healthy. Like pasta and stuff can actually help you gain, it makes you gain weight. And then she, and she heard that, and she was actually trying to like lose weight. And then so when she heard that, like she got really upset. Right, and she got, like she's like, David, you always like like criticize everything, and like all you care about is like you yourself, and like da da da. And I was like, dude, I'm not even talking about you. I'm just like, you know, talking about food in general, right? But she took it really personally, all right. And obviously, this this is one event among many, I guess. Um, but I found out how much I offended her later because later on, my boss called me in. He's like, hey, David, he's like, what the heck is going on with you and that girl, right? I'm like, nothing's going on. And he's like, well, she just submitted her resignation, right? I'm like, what the heck, all right? <laughs> At 21 years old, I wasn't trying to obviously offend anybody, right? And it ended up happening because I wasn't sensitive. You know, a lot of times, integrity in the workplace, that's what it is. You're not trying to offend people directly, right? But by being insensitive, you also show the lack of character sometimes. Or, or you tarnish the gospel in your life, right? So that's, and that's something we've got to be aware of when we're in the workplace, right? Being sensitive to others and making it a point to be sensitive. All right, I think a lot of times we just have this attitude where like, oh, whatever. It's like people just deal with it. That's how that's how I am. Okay, that is not the correct way to, to deal with life. All right, yes, I'm talking to you, Isaac. <laughs> I don't blame you. I talk, I, you know what though? Part of that's I learned that in the Marines. All right, because part of the, in the Marines we're kind of just like deal with it. Let me go back to this. Second story, LA Fitness. Um, at the same time, we had another trainer. He was from San Diego State. All right? He was, like, he, the way he described himself is, you know, you have that friend who smokes pot? He was that friend who smokes pot. All right? Like, this fool, like, smoked pot, like, every day. Um, he, when he came into LA Fitness, he just got saved. And so, um, you know, I told people in the work, you know, I was Christian, things like that. And I told them, like, hey, I'm not planning to stay at LA Fitness forever. I'm just here for a year, because eventually I want to go on missions full time. And so, he was like, oh, sweet, like, I'll talk to you about God stuff, right? And so, as training, you get a lot of downtime between clients. And so, I remember watching him at the training desk. He was sitting with his Bible during his downtime. And I, so, I remember one day I told him, like, hey, if you have questions about that, just feel free to ask me, right? And so, like, all the time, he would come up to me, hey, David, Romans such and such. What does it mean when it says such and such, right? I'm like, okay, because I sat down with him and talked to him. And now, it wasn't a huge deal, right? I didn't think it was, like, going to change his life or anything like that. After I left LA Fitness, a few years later, um, I went to West, Westminster Admit Day, because some people from our church were checking out Westminster. And then at the Admit Day, I saw this guy, right? his name is Joey. Right? I'm like, Joey, why are you here at Westminster? Right? And apparently he wanted to become a pastor. Right? And I had seen this guy for years and years. Um, and he came out to me, and, he, and he, he, he told me, like, Dave, thank you just so much for helping me when I was a young Christian. Right? Like, it might not mean a lot to you, but like, when you help me read the Bible and stuff, like, I was really struggling with my first year as a Christian, and just being able to be at work and to learn the Bible really helped me a lot, right? Um, and then I was talking about ministry and stuff like that and encouraged him for himself to go into ministry. That's what the workplace is sometimes, right? God puts you in, in places to help people on their journey, right? God puts someone in Joey's life to bring him to Christ, then people, God brought people to help him go to church, and then God brought me in, in LA Fitness to help him read the Bible and encourage him to do ministry. Right? That's what it looks like to be a light in the workplace, is to be open to what God might be doing. The insensitivity is that portion where you're just like, I don't care. Well, you don't care can offend people. <laughs> but if you do care, right, if you do make an effort, sometimes God uses you to be a part of someone's life. So first, thing I want you guys to learn, treat everyone well. <laughs> All right, that should be convicting to some of y'all. All right, treat everyone well. <clears throat> Everyone treats their friends and family well. Everyone. All right? <laughs> yes, everyone treats them to the, be, to the best way you can, at least. You treat your friends and family well. It takes the Holy Spirit in your life to treat someone you don't know or someone you dislike well. All right? Who, has, who in here has someone they do not like at the workplace? Raise your hand. Let's be honest. Every, see every hand go up. Don't even lie. <laughs> don't even lie. All right? I'm a missionary, this is what people is. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
you can start treating people badly when you can find me a passage in the Bible where God treats someone the way they, do, they deserve. Okay? When you can find me a passage where Jesus treats someone the way they deserve, you can start doing the same thing. But the last time I checked, right, God extends mercy and grace to people. All right, and by definition, what that means is they do not deserve it. Treat everyone well. Okay? It, it, it's crazy to me when I see when I see Christians like be rude and stuff in their customer service jobs, right? And I'm like, I know you're not like this at church. Right? So why would you be like this here? You know? But it's because people are like, well, I'm upset, so therefore I have a, I have a reason to. <clears throat> if you go in with a mindset and a motivation to say, I want to treat everyone well, it doesn't mean you'll do this all the time. But hopefully what that means is that you'll go in and if you're feeling bad that day, you're feeling hungry, you're upset, you'll pray, you'll stop. You ask a small group for accountability if it's a pattern in your life, right? If you make this one of the values you live by at work, you will do this well. I'm not saying do it perfectly, but you will do it well. The question is, is this a value you hold? Right? Is this actually a value that you hold going to the workplace? Do you go in the workplace saying, I will treat everyone here well? Because I tell you, a lot of non-Christians that I work with do not do that, right? And in, in the gym environment, the personal trainers and stuff like that that I've worked with, they're like, well, I don't like this person, so their session's gonna suck, and I'm gonna be rude, all right? <clears throat> and that's the attitude, like, you don't like me, I don't like you. So, you, so deal with it. You say a lot, right? But is that what we want to be as Christians? I encourage you, this, to be a light in the workplace, to shine God's love, right, means you have to start with the mindset. When you, when you step through that door, Today, I'm going to respect everyone and love everyone the way God does. Does not mean I'll be perfect, right? But at least I'm making a commitment to God that I will make my effort and that he will meet me because he wants me to be this, right? And I'm asking the Holy Spirit to transform my character. If you don't want it, God will not give it to you, right? And some of you guys have never asked for that. I'm telling you right now, right? This is what God is telling you to do. You have to want it. You have to go into the workplace and want to treat and love people. I like this Venn diagram. This is what integrity is. It's your beliefs, all right? A lot of you guys believe in God, believe God was true. Your actions and your words. As they come together, that's your integrity. Don't tell me that you're a Christian and just make, and then like, oh, therefore, then you're a great person, <laughs> right? Because the way you use your words and your actions will show me your actual integrity. Right? And, in, and integrity is, are you say what you say you are? All right? So in the, in, the very, in the very basic sense, if you do customer service, do you actually provide customer service? <laughs> right? That's kind of obvious. All right? Do you actually provide customer service? If you're in a leadership position, do you actually lead your people? Do you actually care about those who work under you? Okay? <clears throat> Carmen has a lot of um, work study students. Right? There's a lot of like, intern people and stuff like that. And it's encouraging to me, and I, I always continue to encourage her, to treat work study people well, interns well. Because a lot of workplaces do not treat interns and work study people well. Right? They're just kind of like, well, you're here, so get ready to be a slave. <laughs> Fetch me my coffee and stuff. Right? What is Christian leadership? The, the best example I saw of leadership in the workplace was actually in the Marines. I remember I was down in Miramar. You guys know Miramar at the Air Base? Some of you don't even know that's there. Okay. There's an airbase on Miramar. <clears throat> I was there, we were with, with, the, with the flight line for a week. And so we were getting our, our, our flight patches made, right? So we were with the captain, and he goes down to his shop. And so the captain, he's basically in charge of everyone like below him, all the mechanics, all the guys who work on stuff, right? So we go, we go to the shop, and then the guys in there are like, oh, good morning, sir. Right? He's like, what do you need, sir? He's like, I, hey, I, I need you to make a patch for David right here. Right? It's like, oh, right away. And then he says to his shop, what do you guys like to drink? Diet Coke? Got Coke? Sprite? All right, I'll be back. He goes upstairs to his own cabinet and brings out drinks for his entire group. Now, he is in charge, okay? He has the right to command his flight group to do whatever he wants, he's in charge. Okay, these guys are like 19-year-olds, like, you know, private first class, private, all that stuff. And he's a captain, he's an O3, all right? But when he asks his men to do something, he blesses them in return. That blew my mind. All right, I'm telling that story, this is years, it's like 10 years later, I'm telling you this story. It blew my, because I've never seen that before. Right, in, in a Christian workplace or a secular workplace, I've never seen that before. Or someone in leadership asked someone to do something and was thankful enough that he went to his own, 
cabinet and got stuff down for his, his group. That's integrity, all right? Because he wakes up every morning, he puts on that suit, he says, I am a leader, I'm a captain. Therefore, I lead and serve my people. Do you do the same thing at work? I don't know if that guy was a Christian or not, right? But by, by his actions, that's what God has called us to do. If you lead people at work, if you're, if you're co-workers, if you work on a team, do you have integrity? We're not going to do it perfectly, but the question is, do we want to be that person? Do we, do we want to be that leader who serves people? Do we want to be that coworker, that, that teammate, who actually is a teammate, who actually plays as part of a team? Excel, because professional integrity is understanding your job role and excelling. <clears throat> we spent a long time getting our jobs. All right, I look, at, I look at some of your LinkedIn stuff, and some of you guys are like, I've done all these things like, to get this job, and da 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 <clears throat> And then when some of you actually get the job, you guys like, just don't care, like don't work hard. <laughs> all right? so I, I talk to you guys in small groups and stuff like that, right? They just don't care. Like, once you're actually in the job, we're like, I get my paycheck anyways. <laughs> all right? <clears throat> Professional integrity is understanding your job role and excelling. You know, it means a lot to me as a mobilizer, to actually be good at mobilization as a missionary. All right, so to give that inside, inside track, all right. <clears throat> in, in ministry, for us people in ministry, it's not just about saving people and like going on the street and preaching and getting everyone saved, okay? For, for me in ministry, being on time for meetings is meaningful to me, okay? Um, having food ready for meetings, if people have meetings with me, that's meaningful to me. Giving people rides and stuff, that's meaningful to me. Because I think that's part of my job, that's professional integrity. It's understanding your job role and excelling at it. I'm gonna show you guys a clip. Somebody the lights real quick. This will illustrate the point. So Inspector Sala says you come with me and watch. What's he done now? Lost his place in Scotland, you out. <laughs> What's in Brother Compass? You means us. No, you means you. It's Lord Blackwood, sir. He uh well. It appears he's come back from the grave, sir. Most engaging. Very clever. I pronounce the man dead myself. What are the facts? Grimeskeeper claims he saw him walking through the graveyard just this morning, sir. I'll leave this in your capable hands. I have an appointment with Mary. Stole my reputation is at stake here. Then try that. But the newspaper's got rid of it yet. Well, that's what we're trying to avoid, sir. Certainly. What's the major concern? Panic. Sheer. Sure. Bloody panic, sir. Indeed. You're not taking this seriously, are you, Holmes? Yes. As you should. <gasps> it's a matter of professional integrity. No girl wants to marry a doctor who can't tell if that's dead or not. <laughs> <laughs> that's when we show like Holmes. No man wants to marry, no woman wants to marry a doc, doctor who can't tell if a man's dead or not. <laughs> Do you actually spend time getting good at your job? <clears throat> I think I, I, I saw this the most um, with personal trainers, all right? Actually, let me ask you this. Do, do, um, who in here thinks that a personal trainer has to be buffed or should be buffed? Very hand, raise your hand. Really? Only a few? To be honest, who of you thinks a personal trainer should be buff, should look buff? That's a good amount of you. Okay. Yeah, okay, that's a good amount of you. <laughs> I think so too. I don't think it's a prerequisite, but I think it's, I think it's important. All right. Um, I saw this a lot as a, as a trainer. Like some, some guys you can tell, like just did not like working out, all right? And I was like, dude, why did you become a trainer then? <laughs> like you're in the gym literally every single day. Why did you become a trainer? That's an easy example. But think about a lot of the researchers in your workplace, or the doctors in your workplace, or the gamers and stuff at your workplace, right? You have, that, you have that feeling sometimes, right? That people don't actually want to be there. Professional integrity is understanding your job role and excelling at it, okay? <clears throat> Can I highly encourage you guys, if you do not want to be at your job, and if you have no passion for it, leave. And I, I'm really serious about that. If you do not want to do your job role, and excel at job role, leave. 
right? Because what that does, you become a toxic force to that workplace. <clears throat> it, was, it was interesting to me that in, in, the, in the Marine Corps, for Officer Canada School, we actually try to weed you out. And so one of the things we actually do to weed you out is you have peer review. And so your peers that you work with actually rank you. All right, and if you consistently fall like at the bottom, like everyone ranks you low, you actually get cut. Right, and basically what that says is that your peers get to determine if you have leadership ability or not. All right, and there's, there's a few individuals who consistently fell at the bottom, right, and we cut them. I, I'm not saying every workplace should do that, but I do believe, right, that if a lot of workplaces started doing, cutting people who didn't want to be there, I think a lot of workplaces would be better. You do not want to be that toxic person in your workplace, okay? Because that, first of all, it reflects badly on your character. Right? I, I want to let you know, San Diego is a small place. It's funny, because I see my, some of my coworkers who I used to work with from years back, I see them at the mall sometimes. Right? <clears throat> you do not want to be known for the rest of your life in that person's eyes as that person who didn't want to show up to work. Right? Who, who lied all the time, made up excuses. <clears throat> I, had a, I had a coworker, he was in sales. Um, one day, I saw my, some of my coworkers like, yelling and getting upset, because apparently he had called in sick. Right? Because apparently he said he was stuck in Mexico somehow, right? Like his car broke down in Mexico and like he got stuck so he couldn't show up for work. And then um, his boss drove by his house and he saw him putting a surfboard in, on his car. <laughs> right? <laughs> I was like, that's, that's not the worst lie. You're in Mexico. <laughs> right? That's a crazy story though, right? But we do, we do think that we, there's like little stories like that in our workplaces all the time. There's little things we do like, oh, all right, it's five o'clock, I should be working, but I'm piecing out. <laughs> all right, because I don't really like this job. Or my coworkers always have like these work conferences, they're optional, I never want to go, because I don't care about this stuff. Right, little things like that. Excellence in work, it makes a difference. It reflects on your character, and it reflects on who God is. This is a big one for me. Help build, help build your business. You succeed when others around you succeed. <coughs> Are you passionate about your company? About, about, about what your company produces? That's not, think about that for a second. Are you actually, if your company succeeds, does that make you happy? You'll see a lot of exciting faces. <laughs> okay? That's really important. I really think that's important. Are you actually passionate about your company, your workplace actually succeeding? I'll tell you, the best workers, the people that people want to work with, are those who actually want to see the team succeed. All right, those who are ambivalent or don't care are the worst to work with. It's like if you're on a sports team, right, you ever play with players who don't really care if they win or lose, they just want to kind of be there? All right, that's not the worst feeling, right? You're like, dude, come on, we're working so hard to win this game. It's like, ah, we win, we win, we lose, we lose. <laughs> but it's like, why are you here? Let me show you a picture. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is Adam winning at life. <laughs> okay. no, this, this is Adam, this is him in Shanghai. Um, he's making this guy laugh right here. <laughs> Shanghai's guy. Um, this, this guy is interesting. This guy, he sat at our table because he's actually very interested in fitness. He wanted to lose weight. And so we were talking in conversation about how do we get more fit, how do we get healthy and stuff. Um, and Adam was in, was in his element when we were in that fitness environment. As a missionary, as you guys can expect, <clears throat> I want OMF International to succeed. I want missionaries of other agencies to succeed. Right? Because I believe we're all working for the same team. Right? Because if a guy from Frontiers or Pioneers does church planting well, then we all of us as Christians complete our mission here on earth. So I will do whatever I can, even if it's not my job description, to help another missionary succeed. All right? <clears throat> Adam, I, my job isn't to make sure Adam's life is like, good, okay? But it's meaningful to me. I want him to succeed, right? I want, him to put, I want to put him in situations where he can excel. I want to put him into with people who are into fitness, right? Not people who are into like, I don't know, biochemistry, because he doesn't know anything about that, right? But I want to put him in an environment where he can do well. Is that, is that part of my job description? Not necessarily, but I want to build right, this missionary community. Do you want to see Pfizer succeed? Do you want to see Sony succeed? Do you want to see, I have no idea where you work for now, Matt. <laughs> but do you want to see what I come to you work for to succeed? 
People love working with people who are positive and actually want to win. Okay, that reflects well on your character. It reflects badly on your character when the, your company does badly and you're kind of just like, ah, oh, whatever. We're gonna break into small groups in a second. I, I give you a lot, hopefully you guys a lot to talk about today. But care for those in your workplace. And this is the number one, my number one point. All right. <clears throat> your Christian character isn't reflected the most when you're out there preaching to people. Okay? Because if you preach to people and you're a terrible worker, that takes away from all the ministry you should try to do. Because that, that influences the way people see the gospel. If you try to preach people and hand out tracts or try to invite them to church and stuff like that, but you're a terrible person to work with, that reflects badly on all Christians. So the, the starting place, I think the starting place is evangelism too. The starting place has to be, do you actually love people of all walks, all right? Not just white people, Asian American people, all right? Like, oh, that person's like a fob, all right? I don't wanna talk to him because his English is not good, all right? Huh. Or like, that person smells because he eats such and such for lunch. <laughs> I'll talk to that person, all right? Care for those in your workplace. Think about this, all right? This is a big test for you guys. If you, if you left your workplace today, and in four years, and you started co-workers on the street, how would they view you? I know some of you guys are really young, but think about that, all right? Um, so I, see, I see some of my co-workers around uh, San Diego all the time. I guess because they're really active, right? Because they're trainers. So I see them like at the beach, like at the gyms, and like on the streets like that all the time, right? And I, I, I think all the time, like, shoot, this person. Was I, was I nice to this person? Right? Like, do I have to treat this person well? That reflects on the gospel. Put in the time to get better at your job. And this goes for all of life. This goes for ministry stuff, too. Right? Put in effort. Don't put in the minimal level, like, okay, I gotta show up at 9, so I can, that means I can be there about 9, 10, 9, 15. <laughs> gotta skip that a little bit. I gotta take it at 5, I can leave at like 4, 45, 4, 30. Don't be looking to take shortcuts. Be that person where you're, your coworkers are like, hey, this, this person actually is showing up, right? Has integrity. He's getting paid 40, 50,000, 100,000 a year, and they're actually earning that money. That's, an, that's another way you think, think about your work. Do you, are you actually worth your paycheck? All right? Um, it's terrible, I'll tell you about this, it's terrible to be a boss and to pay some money and to not feel like they're worth your paycheck. That's a terrible feeling, because you feel like they're, they're stealing from you. All right? So in that way, to your boss, does your boss feel happy if he was paying out of your own pocket? Do you feel like you deserve your paycheck? Be the one that others can count on. Okay? Um, I, I, I Google this, um, professional integrity, and guess what one of the top complaints about workplaces were? Like, bad things you do at the workplace. Guess what one of the top things were? Like, bad behavior at the workplace. Stealing office supplies. Stealing office supplies, functionality, <laughs> stealing money. Unreliable. Unreliable, it's, you're close to it, you're close to it. Flaky. Flaky. Think, of, think about when you feel like really upset at work, your coworkers. You just look. No, that's not that. It's, like, you're really like, you're like, you're just crazy upset. <laughs> getting, getting thrown under the bus. Uh, <laughs> right? No one likes, no one likes that person, right? Or you're in, you're in a group meeting, it's like, why didn't this get done? Oh, Stan screwed it up. <laughs> You threw it, it didn't finish on this bus. Okay. <laughs> Be the one that others can count on. Okay, don't throw the people on the bus, own up to things. Alright, and do your job well. Live a lifestyle that others will want to emulate. <clears throat> the car you drive, the way you spend your vacations, the places you eat after work, right, affect your testimony. If you volunteer at church, if you work for, if you work and serve the poor, that influences people. If you go on missions in your free time, right? If your end goal is to be on a mission, that influences people. Your lifestyle influences people. All right, as we break into small groups, I want you guys to talk about these things, um, encourage one another. Hopefully, some of these points touched you guys. Um, let's talk about our workplace. Let's talk about how we encourage one another. Let's pray.
God, I believe that we just started on this topic. God, I believe that in our small groups now, that you will continue to help us um, to reflect on your word and what it means to be a light in our workplaces. I pray that you would help us to be people who are faithful, to be people who are caring and loving of those we work with. God, help us to excel at our jobs, to encourage one another. Um, and as we talk about our weeks, help us be open and sharing. God, I know, Lord, that you've placed a lot of people here in just really amazing positions and workplaces in the communities. And so, Lord, I pray that you really help us be honest with you. If we repent of our sins, you, Lord, you're faithful to forgive. Help us to go from this place excited, um, convicted, and knowing, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will make us better workers. Lord, we don't do this by our own ability, but Lord, we count and depend on you. So help us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Break. Okay, I'll spend about five, ten minutes kind of snacking, getting to know each other, and then break up around nine, or eight fifty five. So. Good. Yeah. 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 Y